So this is going to be a long rant or a short rant. I haven't decided whether it's going to be longer or shorter than my usual rant. And here's the thing. So today, um, I'm going to be like last person to throw in my opinion about what's wrong with U.S. soccer. And I think if you watched my previous videos, you pretty much figured out that I think the, cha the chief culprit in the problems that the United States is facing this time is MLS. Now, it's been the main culprit throughout its history in the sense that it's a t the best league in America or the top rated league in America as licensed by the United States Soccer Federation. And if you're not going to have a situation where the top league produces the best players, the best or at least reasonably uh, reasonable quality international players, then you're simply not going to have an international roster, a national team roster, uh, filled with capable performers. Um, in the early days, MLS has allowed its players to go to Europe. In fact, I remember in, their, you know, in the audience, in the first part of the de in the first part of the first decade of the 21st century, uh, there was a great deal of brouhaha about American players going to fairly small European or English clubs. England is still in Europe, right? Sort of. After Brexit, still in Europe. Uh, club like Fulham, you know, it, you know, I remember Rob Stone during the All-Star game keep repeating, you know, this guy's going to Fulham, this guy's going to Fulham. That was a big deal. After that, MLS decided that it's not going to sell players if somebody's not going to resign and, you know, they're going to play a little hardball with them. But that will bring in players, in fact, they will overpay players who are more or less established with the national team and they're playing overseas. And to me, that's a big problem because even though you, you, know, you think that Someone like Clint Dempsey couldn't really get any worse, any better, has spent enough time overseas to where his skill level was established. And the only thing that m mattered negatively, would, would impact his career downward, is that he's getting old. But Michael Bradley could have still played in Europe, and Josie Altidore could have still played in Europe. Additionally, players like Graham Zuzzi, although I'm not a big fan of Graham Zuzzi, and Matt Beasley could have gone to Europe. So what happens overall is that players who could be sort of trying to hook up with European clubs will not. And that pretty much cuts, cuts off their career trajectory because if you look at, you know, Dempsey and Bacanegra and even Casey Keller, you go to smaller clubs. If you don't come from a prominent league, if you don't come from Brazil, if you don't come from, you know, Netherlands, you go to bigger European leagues, you go to smaller clubs, or you go to better clubs in the smaller leagues. Or if you're like Christian Pulisic, you go to a youth, to youth team, a youth club, and then try to work your way upward. And that's where MLS sort of scrubbed the pooch. Whatever, close enough? Uh, because what happened is that MLS itself, as a league, doesn't produce players from its rosters doesn't produce international quality players, even mediocre international quality players from their rosters. Uh, if you look at the draft, you know, the super draft, and look how many players have gone on to fame and fortune, you find uh, very disappointing results. MLS doesn't take players, doesn't make them better quickly, and then when it's time to replace them, it does so easily with run-of-the-mill internationals who come from small, really small leagues come in for a couple hundred thousand dollars. So if you cannot take a player out of college or out of you know, youth academy and take him out, bring him up to the level of $200,000 a year, you know, $300,000 a year, player from second division in France or from second division in Germany or from you know, small leagues in Portugal and Netherlands and Belgium, you, you really are not doing your job. So the first key to solving the problem with U.S. soccer is that MLS has to do their job, its job, their job. Clubs have to do their job. So well, the leagues, you know, the academies haven't been open that long. It doesn't matter. If you cannot take a 16-year-old and make him to a decent quality 18-year-old pro, then you're not doing your job. And MLS, for the last decade, forget about even the previous decade, hasn't been able to take its players, youth, college guys, and really send them to a better league. Nobody's really coming to buy MLS players. Okay, you know, once in a while there's a Jose Altidore sale, which was six million euros at the time. Once in a while there is, a, you know, a Matt Miazga sale, 
which was about five million dollar and you wonder why because Chelsea certainly isn't using it it's gonna five million out of the window so the first thing that has to happen in US soccer MLS teams have to become better in nurturing and training as talent now if the players of the coaches currently on the roster and let's not forget so for a lot of American coaches experienced MLS players having a job with the MLS club is simply being a member of the old boys club so you're a member of the old boys clubs you get a job whether you can coach kids whether you cannot coach kids whether you know how to coach kids or whether you simply have no idea what, what's going on so you have players like uh, was it Klein who was in um, LA in, Vag in Vaginas, 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 Vaginas you know and, and, and you know they're, they're on the roster they're comprised the coaching team some of them coach youth academies but there is no product the input there is input there is talent but there is no output they basically go through you know like a meat grinder they go through the talent or like a really bad military you know where you take the talent and produce a lot of dead bodies well that's basically what MLS is doing it takes a lot of body and produces nothing it has to change it has to get better if it needs to hire experienced European or South American coaches to train their youth then that's what they had to do they cannot just pay homage or is it homage to training they have to actually do their job that's the first thing and it's important and it can't be an old boys club that pe of people who don't know what they're doing second of all the league should partner up with a more experienced with a higher quality European league now EPL is bridged too far you can't partner up with EPL because you can't send players there the two most likely candidates to pair up with are the Netherlands with the RDVZ and Belgium with their first division those leagues have no limit on foreigners they pay decent but not extravagant wages and they serve usually as a great step upward in other words if you're a good Belgian player you'll end up in a good club outside of Belgium in a year or two and the same should happen with good American players how, how would this work well my idea is that MLS should send or set up a corp, some sort of a corporation with, Bel with the several Belgian clubs with several uh, Dutch clubs and what, sh what the next step is for MLS to send players there on loan let's call it a long tryout there have been a lot of short trials, there have been certainly a lot of short loans. MLS has been reluctant to send players on loans uh, ever since um, Ben Olsen went to Nottingham Forest back in the uh, mid 90s, late, no, late 90s. Got a really serious knee injury, and it sometimes does happen. You have to have insurance, but it does happen. And the same thing happened with um, on goal Amar Gonzalez, who got hurt in Nuremberg on the trial. And then uh, ended up missing on uh, half a year or so. so the, the, certainly, there is a case that serious injury should be prevented. Having said that, having one injury or having two injuries shouldn't prevent the system because in Europe or you know certainly South America, having players go out and loan is a normal occurrence. If you look at Chelsea, if you look at uh, you know Juventus or Inter, they might have 15 players or 20 players on loan at various levels. You know the beginners are on loan, and you know maybe uh, the second division teams, the better players are on loan at the Premiership club or Serie A club, and some are on loan somewhere in between. That's what MLS has to do. It has to play with the national interest. It had to play nice and play along because I think it's also an interest of MLS. Let's say you take a player very talented like Kellen Acosta. And you send him to Belgium on loan for three months. He doesn't cut the mustard, he comes back. Happens. Not everybody's going to succeed. But if he does do well, he's going, that club or some other club is going to make a bid for his services. And then you're going to sell him for good money. And if you work out your deals properly, you're going to have a deal uh, where you have either a sell on, you know, 10%, which is fairly typical, or maybe even have a larger ownership stake like 25 30 40 percent 50 60 70 well you're not going to have 70 so so if, if a Kellen Acosta or Tyler Adams goes to a Belgian club and then plays really well 
and they sell them to a German club or an English club for you know five, ten million dollars. Then you're going to have a nice cut, and it's and and so and even that portion of the selling rights is going to be enough to subsidize youth academy for uh, for years to come. In case of Christian Pulisic, who said that it's a it's it's a sad day that a young American kid can't go to Germany like a young Croatian kid, which is what he is. There are certainly ways around it. For the most part, most Americans, like Josh Sargent, prefer to stay home until they're ready to play, until they're ready to get paid. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what's hurting MLS to some extent is that these players choose to bypass MLS entirely. See, in the old days, MLS picks you know, draft somebody, they develop him, he plays for a few years, the, you know, the person becomes a better player, and then he goes out as a free agent. Now the free agency begins before MLS. That doesn't work too well for the U.S. Soccer League, MLS, because Pulisic is probably worth $100 million in the transfer market now. So by being cheap and cheesy and refusing to sell and refusing to send people out on loan, and really trying to benefit not just U.S. soccer, but itself and the players, MLS is, is acting in an anti-market type of manner. And the market always reacts to it. So Pulisic gone now. There's not going to be another Pulisic in any time soon, but he's going to go for $100 million probably, you know, to a big club. And... Every American now who has potential, who's coming off a good U17 or U20 championship, is going to think that he's going to do, if not as well, then particularly well. He's going to go out to Europe, he's going to do well, he's going to get a 5 or $10 million a year contract. And that's not going to happen in MLS. And that's what's going to hurt MLS from now on, because the top talent like Pulisic, like Josh Sargent, are going to sign with some other team. They're going to sign with some other league. They will go to Belgium. They will go to Netherlands. They will go to Germany. Now, what do those three countries have in common? None of them has a limit on foreign players. And none of, the only thing they have uh, going against them is that they have to, they can only sign players once they turn 18. That's a whole different story. We may touch it later. We may not. But anyway, this is my idea. Okay, and they have to hire a good coach too. I mean, Bruce Arena is a nitwit. So they have to hire a good coach. And hopefully there will be somebody from uh, Europe and somebody with good resume. Forget how the person interviews. He has to get a good resume. I hope we'll talk later, right? Come on. Let's hope.